Okay, good morning. Um, see, uh, today we'll continue with uh, what we were doing in the last class. Uh, at the moment, there are only uh, 10 students are there in the class. I think they will be joining. Anyhow, they can listen to the video lecture uh, in case they are missing the initial part. Right, uh, so we were just doing in our previous class uh, uh, the suspension effect on cornering. So that is what we will continue. We have just started uh, understanding uh, the physical uh, phenomena, what would happen during the hard cornering because of uh, inclusion of uh, uh, suspension effect in our lateral dynamic study, right? So uh, let me just to share my screen and uh, quickly review what we were doing in the last class and continue for that. So, so hope you are able to see this uh, screen. Uh, see, in the previous lecture, we have importantly defined an important uh, uh, point. That's what is called a static margin. So why static margin is important is because uh, till uh, before suspension uh, consideration in our bicycle model, our bicycle model also is called as an yaw plane model. So we were looking at directional control or directional stability using that uh, two degree freedom um, bicycle model. So it is apt to understand what do you mean by static margin because uh, you would see similar uh, um, a neutral steer point, uh, which is used to define this static margin. You have a roll center when you consider uh, your um, suspension interface. So let us look at uh, this definition. What we were learned in the last class is static margin is the ratio of the distance of neutral steer point from the CG to the wheel base, right? So steady state yeah, velocity is what you know uh, during the speed motion, which represents the orientation change of your vehicle when you view from top view or the change in its orientation with respect to vertical axis. So uh, you see this neutral steer point is the point when there is a side force uh, resultant acting at that point will not produce this steady state yaw velocity. It is all produced is because uh, that is acting not at uh, neutral steer point, rather at CG, and there is uh, uh, distance e, small e, that defined in the diagram, right? So that is what is uh, uh, defining uh, the uh, directional response or uh, the tendency of the vehicle that we call. So if we have your uh, uh, this neutral steer point is behind CG you would have uh, understeer effect. If the same is coinciding with CG, that means the side force will not produce yaw, any uh, yaw um, velocity, steady state yaw velocity, and the vehicle will remain in its state path. So that is what is called a neutral steer tendency. In case if we have your uh, neutral uh, steer point is ahead of uh, CG location of your vehicle, then uh, you would see that uh, the vehicle uh, tendency would turn into uh, oversteer effect, right? So this is what we have uh, just looked at in the uh, previous class. So you see that we also have defined here uh, uh, this value of E. Uh, how can we get it? We derived that here. So it depends upon this K3 value, right? If K3 value is negative, that would make your E value uh, going to be uh, uh, ahead of CG. That means AN will be lesser than G. That's what you would get, right? So that's what first we have started looking at in the last class. And then uh, we were uh, also looking at, uh, so far in bicycle model without suspension, what was predominantly uh, considered is cornering compliance. So it is represented degree per G value. So this you could understand clearly because uh, you know the steering requirement is given by uh, R by L, L by R, right? It's L by R, L by R plus alpha F minus alpha R, alpha minus alpha R. So this also can be represented in terms of degrees. It is in radians. If it is to be represented in degrees, that means slip angles should be in degrees. 
then it should be multiplied by the factor 57.3 L by R plus alpha F minus alpha R. Right? This is the requirement of steering angle uh, in your uh, vehicle when you consider uh, bicycle model. So, if you look at this difference in alpha F and alpha R, R expressed through the compliance value, cornering compliance value. And uh, we have also considered um, in our bicycle model, this Fy as function of alpha, which is actually going to go like this with the nonlinear way, but we have considered uh, constant C alpha as alpha tends to zero. So we define this now alpha as mm, mm, how did you define this d dy by the slope of this d y d of y by d alpha as alpha tends to zero what we defined as c alpha so this we have taken as constant so w f by c C alpha F R W R by C alpha R are defining tire compliance. If the tire compliance is more in the front axle, it would behave as an understeer vehicle. If it is more in the rear axle, then the vehicle uh, tendency uh, would be uh, more of uh, oversteer tendency, right? That's what uh, from this earliest definition also we have understood. And in bicycle model, we have taken this. But in reality, if you look at your cornering uh, uh, force developed at the uh, tire wheel uh, interaction with the road would be uh, non-linearly varying with the function of uh, the load acting on the uh, wheels. So that's what we are going to account in today's class. Uh, so that we will be able to deduce the expression uh, which would uh, contribute towards uh, the understeer gradient what we have defined in bicycle model if we introduce the suspension in our model, right? So this is what we were uh, last class looking at, what is uh, the mechanisms, how the lateral load transfer that takes place. There are two mechanisms that is, uh, uh, is responsible for lateral load transfer during hard cornering. So you go style and you take a turn. Uh, let me just zoom this. Uh, take a right turn. You see that uh, your uh, um, body, vehicle body, that is sprung mass rolls about the roll center. It rolls about this roll center. So when it was straight, you see this total weight is balanced by uh, FZ value that is acting at uh, the contact of the uh, wheels with the ground. And the moment you take a turn, you see that uh, there will be a roll of your sprung mass with respect to roll center. So here this point, uh, what does that is defining? Here is, this is roll center. So the roll center is uh, defined as the point where uh, you have, uh, you have the transfer of uh, Fy to the sprung mass. So the lateral force that is developed at the axle is transferred to the sprung mass to the roll center. That is how you can define what is roll center. Or you can also look at roll center is that as if you have your side force acting at the roll center that will not produce any load in the uh, vehicle body. So the role of the sprung mass is all because of the elevation of its CG location. The CG is uh, uh, not located uh, very close to the ground, uh, rather it is elevated from the ground. So this is normally uh, more pronounced in case of a heavy vehicle or trucks that you can say compared to the top passenger cars. Right? However, uh, you would have this point uh, uh, roll center that characterize your suspension as that uh, roll center point is the point uh, or, uh, through which the lateral forces get transferred to the sprung mass. That is what we have understood. And uh, you see this uh, free body diagram and on this uh, right uh, left, this diagram Fy is transferred to RC, roll center, and then further it is taken to uh, your um, CG location. So there are two couples that are acting. 
one couple is uh, uh, in the axle another couple is in the uh, sprung mass so there is a role in uh, axle as well as there is a role in the sprung mass but uh, uh, in our uh, free body diagram and the subsequent equilibrium equation uh, the moment balance at roll center is given you this expression 3 and that can be looked at uh, to have two uh, so this expression 3 we were writing uh, is all because of to find out what would be the change in the normal load due to this uh, lateral load transfer so this roll transfer is taking place through two mechanisms is what that you have understood one is due to lateral force uh, or cornering force that we call and that would be an instantaneous force which is an independent uh, uh, of uh, the sprung mass roll whereas the other term uh, 2 k5 into 5 by t is what is uh, uh, lateral load transfer due to vehicle roll or the body roll of the uh, vehicle which depends on roll moment distribution in the front axle and the rear axle so this is important so in order to understand this what is important is you have to consider the free body diagram uh, of uh, the whole vehicle both the axle of the vehicle and we have to proceed further uh, writing down the equations so let us do that in today's class so before that let's understand why this roll moment distribution is so important Right, so I'm going to start today's class with this understanding roll moment distribution. So when you say roll moment distribution, that is uh, in the front axle as well as in the rear axle. So you have suspension in the front axle as well as in the rear axle. In front axle, most of the time you see that you have independent suspension, whereas in the rear axle, you do not have that as a solid axle suspension. But in our study, the suspension uh, in this free body diagram in the previous class, we consider equivalent suspension uh, springs uh, of the uh, left and right together we have considered, and uh, we do not consider uh, uh, the effect of independent suspension. Right? <clears throat> Why there are independent suspension in the front axle is because if you see normally the stiffness of the spring in the front axle is slightly lower than that of the rear in order to have a flat ride. That means for the ride comfort in order to avoid pitch and bounce effect which you will be studying in vertical dynamics the pitch and bounce model. The flat ride I do not want any bounce or uh, the uh, uh, pitch and bounce motion of my body then it is recommended that you would have this front suspension <coughs> front suspension springs uh, constants are smaller than that of the rear but on the other way if you have uh, uh, front suspension springs smaller and you have uh, uh, the same uh, separation of springs like what you consider in our free body diagram is yes the spring suspension uh, separation of the springs uh, given by the distance s you would see that uh, you would have uh, roll moment distribution in the front axle smaller than that of the rear axle which may not be that preferred but that has been accounted by uh, uh, by your uh, independent suspension the distance if you look at it's more than that of uh, the rear axle suspension point so that is compensating there and additionally there are also called uh, uh, roll stiffness uh, that is called uh, see this uh, stabilizer roll stabilizers so if you see those are implemented the bars are there uh, in the front axle it would create more roll moment distribution in the front compared to that of the rear right so this roll moment distribution is very important so if you look at uh, 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 as we were looking at uh, the lateral force what is developed in a wheel is depends on the vertical load so let's look at the variation of fy is developed in an axis in axle what does fy develop which is going to be function of fz if you look at that would vary in this way non-linear way so if we look at uh, i have a wheel per wheel 800 pound per wheel 
there are 800 pounds. This is in pounds, let us take as it is given in Jiller's free textbook. Uh, so this is 800 pounds per wheel. So per axle it will be 1600, all right? 1600 pounds. So the load is same 1600 pounds if that is going straight. When it is to take a corner, what will happen? There is a development of FY. So when it is developed, what would happen? At a particular slip angle, so this diagram is drawn at a particular slip angle, say 5 degrees. Then uh, what is available for you at that moment would be not 800, it would be lesser than that, say it is 760 pounds. 760 pounds. Right? Of course, uh, 800 somewhere here, right? It is 800 pounds. But you would be able to develop at this slip angle 760 that will force that sufficient uh, for uh, to hold uh, the vehicle on the course. But uh, what has happened? We have considered C alpha value as constant and uh, the variation is linear when you consider. When it is taking a turn, you have uh, um, there is a variation in inner and outer value. So F is at I and F is at not. So F is at not. F is at. F is at not. So what does the subscript not represent outer wheel and this is an inner wheels. Uh, so now uh, you would have that uh, there is a load reduction in the inner wheel and load reduction in out, uh, increase in outer wheel because of lateral load transfer. That's what we have seen. So uh, if this value happens to be say 400 and this value would be 1200. Because per wheel it is 800, so the total of 1600 pounds now, uh, which was equally shared before uh, turn, and that would produce uh, expected uh, 760 will not be produced as now this is the case. So I would have here correspondingly the two values, and the average of these two, if I take, that would be somewhere here, and that value would be smaller than that of what is expected to be produced 760. So maybe this is around 680 as per the textbook value, right? So 680 pounds only. So 680 pounds is not sufficient to have your vehicle uh, uh, to have its lateral uh, motion, uh, lateral dynamic aspects, right? It's not lateral motion, lateral dynamic uh, aspects. So it has to generate the required lateral acceleration. So it may not be sufficient with this. So it would make the slip angle uh, increase requirement. Uh, that is how it goes. So uh, I, instead of considering a constant value, taking this average and which would uh, uh, have only lesser value than what is required. If I have to account this nonlinear effect, it is uh, always considered that this Fy is uh, expressed in terms of F is that. So it will be say some A times F is that minus b times f is that squared like that. So the variation is considered uh, in a simple polynomial b in this fashion. So let's look at this uh, uh, in our um, uh, explanation further, all right? So this is what we have to understand. So what would happen in case of uh, uh, roll moment uh, distribution? Uh, see here, why this is important? Uh, we look at in roll moment distribution. It's all uh, lateral load transfers because of elevation in CG, and uh, uh, the load transfer uh, uh, that takes place from uh, inner wheel to outer wheel. So uh, there is a reduction, the same amount of uh, load is transferred onto this. This would also produce the tire deflection. So the tire deflection uh, uh, are related to the tire vertical stiffness, we would account that in our uh, rollover stability analysis. At the moment, we are not looking at the flexibility in our tire. We only look at in our vehicle on the suspension flexibility, right? Okay.
you also know that uh, the roll moment distribution depends upon uh, the roll stiffness of your vehicle which is given by k phi and that would be dictated by half into k s into s squared where this k s is what is spring stiffness right this is also uh, is very clear s is what is the separation of the equivalent stiffness that is considered in our uh, free body diagram right now this can be uh, proved simply this relationship so um, oh, continuing further uh, as the roll moment distribution uh, in the front and rear axle to be considered let us consider the whole vehicle uh, uh, typical free body diagram right so for that let me draw this uh, diagram so i have my front axle wheels front axle wheels So this is your contact. And you have the roll center of uh, the front axle uh, roll center because of the suspension at a distance say HF. HF. And uh, similarly you have, uh, this is your symmetry axis, the ground level. And I have here my rear axle. This is the contact to the road. So I have here my rear axle wheels. Rear axle wheels. And this rear axle wheels, uh, here with the suspension, you see there is a uh, roll center for this suspension. See, now I am in the previous free body diagram. Your uh, left side, if you take both the suspension springs, equivalence is taken. Uh, as well as on right axis, uh, right ax, uh, right side you have taken two. But now we are considering all the springs independently, and because of that, uh, you have these two axles appearing um, uh, with this uh, uh, definition of HF and HR. So HR is slightly higher than that of. I'm sorry, HR is slightly higher than that of HF, and you see that uh, there will be. If I just draw a line parallel to the ground, there will be an angle here. So this roll axle, so this axis, whatever is drawn, this axis is called the roll axis. And this point is called the roll center in the front axle and characterizing the suspension. This is the, what is the roll center uh, of the rear axle characterizing the uh, above the rear axle characterizing the suspension of the uh, rear suspension and there is a small angle here and this angle let's call as zeta <coughs> and this is what is the roll axis so this one is what is roll axis so uh, the entire spun mass which is kept now uh, over this two axle uh, is going to roll with respect to this roll axis so you see that the location of uh, uh, your CG uh, from here at a height of uh, um, H1, let's consider that as H1 uh, and that would be somewhere here. But as it is to roll, that would go at an angle here. So this would be rolling like this. So this is a roll angle five. This is a roll angle five. And you see here now at this point your weight of the vehicle is down and uh, this force which is uh, now the roll is in this uh, direction, right? What is the direction of the roll? In this direction. So the entire uh, roll moment would uh, be rotating your vehicle in this direction and uh, you would have here your uh, centrifugal force. Uh, this is the diagram for DL Metz principle according to that. So when I write that it's W U square by RG. RG. So U squared by R is lateral acceleration. W by G is what is mass. So MV square uh, is what we write it uh, uh, is that here, right? It's not W, please. Uh, you may this is U square clearly. 
u square or in textbook it is written as v square so i just write u square is because that's what we have been following uh, as it is the uh, longitudinal speed of your vehicle right <coughs> so w squared by rg is what is there so now you know that this height from here uh, uh, the cg location height from the ground you know that it's that is h but now uh, from here to here this height this height is taken as h1 right this is h1 and this is uh, simply h and h are what i had considered uh, in the previous uh, free body diagram uh, how uh, where uh, that is uh, um, from the ground where is this roll center so roll center is the point uh, in our axis roll axis so now hf is uh, uh, roll center height uh, from the, the ground in different axis hr is the roll center height from the rear axis so this is what if we have understood uh, uh, these are the two forces and this cg location it acts right so you know that uh, what is this role this role is all uh, all because of uh, you, uh, you have to go to this uh, go to this previous picture so here uh, you see that uh, so here you see this fy is transferred to roll center there is a couple that is uh, uh, instantaneous on that axle trying to rotate this axle and then again uh, this fy uh, is shifted uh, to uh, the cg location and that creates a couple which is uh, trying to rotate this and restoring couple is what is uh, by k phi into phi that's the equal so this fy is there and the weight is what is there so this is what is the free body diagram this fy in this diagram is as uh, now shifted to cg location and the couples acting are responsible for the role so when you look at the role you do not require to uh, uh, look at these forces in the axis that's why this free body diagram does not show the uh, show them so we just to look at the role of your um, uh, role of your vehicle alone so it is uh, the spung mass free body diagram only i am considering you can say like that in that right so taking moment about this roll axis now moment about the roll axis roll axis what is that i get uh, my total roll moment m5 subscript phi reference and the roll moment that would be i have here w into this height this distance how much it is h1 sin phi opposite side so sin phi so w into h1 sin phi plus this into this height so how much it is uh, h1 cos phi h1 cos phi so w u squared by rg into h1 cos phi and this is now the roll moment about this in longitudinal direction exactly to get i have to project that on to this uh, uh, horizontal longitudinal axis uh, that would be multiplying this with the further cos side so i just to project it on this axis so this is the expression now uh, that we have so what was the equation number earlier we had this uh, um, the equation number four so let's now consider this is equation number five this is equation number five this is equation number five and we know that in this this angle phi roll as well as this small angle psi are very small very small in the vehicle design so when they are very small this m5 can further be uh, written uh, as this way that's going to be w h1 the sin phi will become only phi plus cos phi will be 1 cos psi is 1 so this is going to be w u squared by rg into h1 
right? So in this, I can take out, I can take out uh, WH1 common. And if we take that out, WH1, I would have here, it's five plus U squared by RG, U squared by RG, right? So this is M5. So this M5, it's a roll moment, total roll moment uh, in the axle. Uh, that sum of uh, the front axle roll moment as well as what is the roll moment exerted the rear axle. So I can also write this as M5 with subscript small f plus M5 with subscript small r. And that would be equal to K5 f plus K5 r into pi where k5 is what is roll stiffness right roll stiffness and uh, see now uh, since the phi term uh, i have it here uh, w h1 phi and here i have this uh, so i have to uh, rewrite it like this see, there is a phi term here and there is phi term here so i have to bring this on to uh this this term onto this so let me write that as w h1 u squared by rg and just to take this on this side and this phi term i'm taking it on the other side so that i will have k phi f plus k phi r and w h1 phi that comes here minus w h1 into phi so I can define now what is my roll angle. I can determine the roll angle phi right? W H1 U squared by R C divided by K phi F plus K phi R minus W H1. W H1. So this is roll angle. roll angle of the vehicle body <clears throat> so let's number these equations uh, so this equation is six this equation is seven and this equation is eight no. this equation is eight so here is what uh, we will define an important term called the roll rate The roll rate, when we say rate quantity, uh, we always get in our mind that it's with respect to time. But here, uh, it is not uh, explicitly expressed the roll rate as uh, uh, d phi by dt. Instead, it is d phi by d a y. So what is a y? It's lateral acceleration. So what is the rate of change of roll per uh, lateral acceleration is what is going to define roll rate. Or if I have the variation of roll angle as function of a y and I take a slope and that defines what is the roll rate. And that would be now, so do phi by do a y, a y we represent always as uh, a normalized value of g, right? So this a y, uh, a y here is v squared by r g, that is a y. V squared by RG is what is AY. U squared by RG is what is AY. So see here, U squared by RG is there. So if I uh, differentiate this, I get WH1 by K5 F plus K5 R minus WH1 is what is ninth equation. Gives me what is the roll rate. So what is the typical value of this roll rate? The typical value of this roll rate would be 7 degrees, uh, 3 to 7 degrees, 3 to 7 degrees, 3 to 7 degrees per G, per lateral acceleration, per passenger car, for typical cars. And Right, so what do you mean by this uh, roll rate? If I know this roll rate, uh, suppose it's uh, uh, 0.3 G, 
uh, if I know, if I multiply that with uh, uh, roll rate, right? If I know lateral acceleration, uh, see, uh, If I know lateral acceleration, I just to multiply with this uh, value for uh, vehicle given, I get roll angle. So the roll is given by the roll angle phi is obtained simply multiply d phi by d a y by the a y value, right? So that's how you get. And now, uh, looking at equation number four that was done in the previous class, uh, what was the equation? Uh, we had uh, uh, two mechanisms arises to account what would be the change in normal load. So let's delta F is at, if you recollect, by two into T is what is given by Fi into HR. So HR to avoid confusion, HR C I put, roll center, right? You can also change the HR if I put now HR here is the roll center at the rear axle in this study that we are looking at. To avoid the confusion, I just use the substrate, correct that as HRC, roll center height uh, plus K phi into phi. So this is what is equation number four that we had. In this, what is this FI is MV squared by RG. So if I substitute that W is squared by RG into HRC plus H RC is subscript, it's not product. H is the height of roll center as you consider a whole vehicle in the previous class free body diagram, right? Plus K phi, K phi into phi. So now uh, I, I require this K phi into phi. So K phi into phi, K phi into phi is what this, uh, if I take this on the other side, this delta F is at by two into T, where T is tread or track width that you know, right? <coughs> Minus W U squared by RG into HRC into HRC. So let's look at this equation as number 10. We had already equation 9 where we define roll rate. Equation 8 defines roll angle. And now we had this uh, roll. Uh, defined through the suspension. So this K phi into phi is the roll exerted onto the axle by the body roll you can say. So if this is uh, like that and generate, I can have it for an individual axle as K phi F into phi. And uh, phi is roll angle, uh, roll of, of body about the axis. So the roll at the front axle uh, roll center as well as rear axle roll center, there is no difference. It's phi only. It's not phi F and phi R. It's phi for an entire body roll. But uh, K phi F roll stiffness in the front axle and the rear axle would be different. So K phi F into phi can be written as delta F is at by 2 into F is at, uh, and I write here it is uh, uh, front axle wheel, so F is at F. By 2 is because per wheel into T minus W F H F. So you look at now this H F is my roll center which is uh, for a whole vehicle, whereas per axle when I look at, it's WF into HF into U squared by RG. In a similar way, I can write what would be the roll moment distribution in the rear axle. That would be K phi R into phi. That would be delta F is at R by 2 into T minus W here F here is WR into HR is squared by 2 RG. So these two equations, right? let's call it as equation number 11. <coughs> so now after writing uh, this all, uh, so what is important now is to look at 
how do you translate see what is uh, why do we have to do this all uh, effect of suspension on to vehicle handling tendencies so vehicle handling tendency is given by kus right understeer gradient so we had already an expression of understeer gradient uh, uh, considering uh, um, only the rigid body of the vehicle total weight of the vehicle we have not considered suspension there so if we consider the suspension what would be the effect in this kus is what is the ultimate aim so translate the effect of this roll moment distribution and to say that what would be the effect on kus it is important that we have to relate uh, your lateral force developed with your slip angles so for that purpose we should look at that we have uh, your uh, fy dash is given by c alpha dash c alpha dash into alpha so what is this uh, why it is with the dash because uh, now c alpha has to be expressed as function of function of uh, normal load so if you look at that what we were writing down uh, in the previous slide so it's not a, a fy i'm sorry I'll change that here it's not a fy Uh, it is given by C alpha. This is C alpha. This is C alpha. So your F Y can be the C alpha dash into alpha. So this F Y is now what we are counted as uh, varying with that. So I define the stiffness, which is not constant. Uh, rather, it is function of normal load and uh, varying as a polynomial, as a quadratic variation. For the simplicity, so when you consider this, uh, it's not simplicity. Quadratic uh, variation is sufficient because uh, if you go for higher order polynomial, the errors would be uh, minimized. But uh, even with the uh, quadratic polynomial assumption, uh, the error is not that much. It is uh, 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 it can be considered right. You will see that as we deduce our expression, uh, why uh, it's sufficient to consider only uh, the quadratic variation. <coughs> so if uh, uh, you look at uh, this is our new definition uh, where we have to count the uh, non linearity of your tire model uh, so i can define now um, this as uh, like this what is c alpha dash is a uh, uh, a f is at a f is at Minus b f z square is what is my stiffness now into alpha. This is per week. Remember, this is per week. But uh, we have in an axle pair of wheels. So uh, what would be per uh, axle per axle to get? I would have my f y written as this way. A f z not. Minus b f z not square. This is outer b plus a f z i minus b f z i square. So this is for outer wheel. This is for inner wheel. So this uh, summation into alpha into alpha. Why? Right? It's what is per. Uh, so why do I add the stiffness? It's because uh, of parallel. They are they are they are in pair of axle wheels, right? So it's front axle plus this uh, stiffness. I just add so that I'll get an equal and corner stiffness into alpha. So let the uh, load change on each wheel now. Let the load change. Load change on. load change on each wheel each wheel uh, can be written as f is at not as f is at you see in the previous class uh, free ball diagram i have put f is at normal load on each wheel when there is no torque the same But now F is at not would be outer wheel would get increase in their load transfer due to load lateral load transfer. So by F is at delta F is at amount 
and f is at i would be increased decreased by f is at minus delta f is at delta f is at so now if i substitute this f is at not and f is at i in this equation so let's number this equation so this is equation number 12 so put these values in equation number 12 and uh, you are going to have accordingly uh, this so putting this put in equation 12 i would get fy i i leave it to you to work out i'll get fy as this 2 a f is at minus 2 b f is at square minus 2 b delta f is at square into alpha <coughs> so this is what i will get so here this f is at not f is at not f is at i f is at i if we substitute this and then i deduce that there are terms cancelling there are terms added so i get this So now you look at two times f is at a f is at a two uh, a f is at two b f is at square. So this is per axle. This is per axle. C alpha per axle. So if I look at this now, I can write what is my lateral force per axle? Double up f y. This means f y as C alpha minus 2b delta f is at square into alpha delta f is at square into alpha, right? So let's call this equation as 13. This equation as 14. So now, uh, further, uh, uh, see now you have what is the lateral force developed in terms of uh, accounting the normal load as well as slip angle. So this expression would help us now to uh, get into uh, get into your understeer gradient, right? So uh, how do you get that? Uh, uh, you see that if F Y is this generic per axle, if this uh, expression has to be written for my front axle. Then it is going to be F Y F. That would be C alpha F. So the C alpha will subtract F minus 2 B delta F is at F square into alpha F. So this slip angle at the front axle. Similarly, F Y R would be C alpha R minus 2 B delta F is at R square. into alpha r so this is equation 15 so now if you look at this you get an idea now what are the what is that we are going to do right so i have here a front i have a relationship uh, now uh, relating this expression relating what a lateral uh, uh, force slip angle and the change in normal load of course the cornering stiffness now this cornering stiffness here <coughs> Uh, is given by a polynomial. So this here, right? So this C alpha F or C alpha R. When I put this is going to be 2A F is at F minus 2B F is at F square. Like that, you should consider here, right? It's not one constant value. So having this, and you know, ultimately uh, our understeer gradient uh, uh, tendency is brought in the expression of requirement of steer angle. That would be given in degrees when I have this expression 57.3. So how does this 57.3 comes? Uh, your conversion of radians into degrees. So you know 180 degrees uh, equal to 5 radians. So 180 by 5, if you divide, you get this. So this into L by R will be L by R uh, plus alpha F minus alpha R. Is what is this required? So now this alpha f and alpha r is what is required to be substituted. That can be obtained from equation 15. So equation 15 can further be written as this way. So uh, what is this f i uh, f is uh, uh, whatever the uh, centrifugal force. So f i is what is ultimately this is equal to w u squared by r g, right? So here it's going to be 
W F U squared by R G. And this is W R U squared by R G. R G. So now uh, I can get my alpha F if I take this down. Is this, so this delta is going to be 57.3 L by R plus alpha F is going to be what now? W F U squared by R G divided by C alpha F minus 2 B delta F is at F square minus W R U squared by R G by C alpha R minus 2 B delta F is at delta F is at R square. And you see now, this expression uh, 16 can be uh, further reduced if we have understood that if this value of C alpha is much, much greater than, C alpha is much, much greater than this term, 2B delta F is at square. If this is very much greater, then I can write this expression 16 further like this. Further like this. How? So you know that uh, uh, this 1 by the series 1 by 1 minus x, right? If this x is 1 is uh, see, very, very smaller than uh, x is very, very small value than 1. How do you write that expression as it is so this series can be expressed as 1 plus x minus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial minus and so on like this. <coughs> so uh, I am going to write this like this. <coughs> In this if we are neglecting this x squared by 2 factorial these terms are error small errors, it can be written as 1 plus x. So 1 by 1 minus x can be written as 1, minus 1 plus x. If uh, uh, x value is very, very, very uh, small value, right? That's exactly what is there here. So if C alpha is very much greater than this term, uh, then uh, I can write this as follows. <coughs> This is as follows. How this delta is going to be 57.3, 57.3 L by R plus WF U squared by RG. I take the C alpha out for this uh, way to write. Uh, 1 by 1 minus X to write. Here if I take C alpha out and C alpha R out, uh, I would have now uh, this expression here like this. So C alpha out, I would have here instead of 1 by 1 minus x, I write 1 plus x equal and here in this term that become 1 plus the summation of this. So C alpha, if we take out, there, there is a uh, ratio of this by C alpha. Yeah, so that's going to be 2b delta f z square by C alpha here yeah. minus WF U squared by RG by C alpha R. Then I get 1 plus 2B delta F is at R, F is at F, F is at R squared by. It's not whole divided by 1 plus and this by C alpha R. You have this expression. So now again, this can be easily reduced further. Taking the first term here on both and the U squared by RG is that relaxation. If I take it out, it's going to be WF by C alpha F minus WR by C alpha R into 
u squared by into u squared by rg. RG. Again here plus uh, the second term. Look at here. In the second term here, I would have uh, plus two, right? WF. WF. This has to go inside WF uh, into two B delta F is at F. Delta F is at F square by C of Y of minus W R to B delta F is at R. See, this is per wheel, you have to see, right? This delta F is per wheel by C alpha R square. Because there is C alpha F here, it goes square, it goes here square. This into U squared by RG. So if you look at this term, is due to tire combines that comes. Here C alpha F and C alpha R, and you look at it, it is nonlinear variation. Whatever we define, that does not change. But this comes from tire compliance value at that uh, mm, uh, particular slip angle or at that uh, instant, right? And this comes due to lateral load transfer. So this is that getting added with this. So this is KUS if you say this term also is KUS because it's multiplied by U squared by RG, U squared by RG. If I take it out, I have in my previous bicycle model, I had only this. I can consider these values as constant. The moment I do not consider C alpha F and C alpha R not constant, they are function of normal load, then I would have uh, this expression added. So this is uh, lateral understeer gradient due to lateral load transfer. This is uh, due to tire. KUS due to tire compliance, right? So this is all what does that, uh, the change that you would see. As far as uh, the steady state understeer gradient is concerned uh, due to the suspension introduced in our model. Now, uh, let us continue with uh, rollover stability analysis. Right, rollover stability. Yeah. 